Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about romance books that unfortunately disappointed me. I don't normally make negative content on my channel, and I'm going to try not to be as negative as possible in this, but I just want to tell you all my thoughts on these books that I had such high expectations for, and unfortunately, they let me down. Now, I did not hate most of these books, most of them. Um, all of them did really disappoint me and really let me down, so that's saying something, but the majority of these books were like three stars. You know, some of them are one star or DNF, so take with that what you will. Um, but yeah, these are romance books that I have read recently um, that have just disappointed me, did not hit the mark. I also wanna preface before this video gets started, like this is no ill will on the authors for these books that I'm about to talk about. These authors, I bet, are amazing people that I know of, and um, there's no ill will or hate on any of them. I just did not particularly enjoy these books, and reading is subjective. Not everyone's going to love what they read, and some people are going to be disappointed in books that they read. So um, unfortunately, that's what the case was for these books, but that does not mean that I hate any of these authors, or I'm or telling you not to read this book, or not to read this author. You know, like I will still read books by the authors that are in this video. You know, like a Candy Robert book's in here and Amanda Milo book is in here. You know, like I love those authors. I'm still gonna read their books. Th these books just weren't for me. So with that being said, here is, here is my rant video. So the first one I really love to mention <laughs> is one that I have been ranting about, unfortunately, on like all my platforms. This is The Lady and the Orc by uh, Finley Fenn. I don't understand the love for this book, unfortunately. Like, how could you love this manipulating, I'm talking about the heroine in this sense, how could she love this manipulating a liar who humiliated her at every turning point and did nothing to grovel besides cry like a baby? I ended up buddy reading this with Caitlin, I believe in October and, uh, Caitlin from the Love Librarian, by the way. Um, and we both did not care for this. Caitlin I didn't even manage it. Um, and I just spoiled the rest of the book for her because I pushed through. But man, this book disappointed me. This is like an orc romance where the orc steals the heroine. And there's just horrible crap going on. He lies to her constantly. He even sexually assaults her at points. There's dubious consent. I just, I would love for people to tell me in the comments why you love this book. I apologize, I do not. But I was just really looking forward to this because a lot of my monster romance mutuals, monster romance lover mutuals, have like loved this series. And I'm like, what is it with this book that you love so much? Please, I would love to know, please enlighten me. Next one is Love Beyond Words by Emma Scott. I believe this is Emma Scott's first ever published novel. And I was wanting to read all of Emma Scott's backlist because some of my favorite romance books of all time Time are written by Emma Scott. I love Forever Right Now. I love the Full Tilt duet. And so I'm making it a goal as a reader to reread, not reread, sorry, go back and read my authors, my favorite authors' backlist titles. So I was like, you know what? We're gonna start with number one. We're gonna do it. So this is the romance between Natalie and Julian. I believe they end up meeting at a coffee shop. I believe Natalie works there and Julian just comes in every day to write his book. He's a very popular famous author and he sits in the cafe coffee shop like every day to write and then there is a suspenseful element that comes between the two of them when they start falling for each other and i was not expecting that because there is no suspense element in the other emma scott books that i've read so i was not aware that that was a part of this book and if you don't know me i don't really care for suspense romances and i was really liking this book at first they really meet cute at a coffee shop getting to know each other that way, like she, he is her favorite author. And this is a suspense romance where 50% of the book is the romance and a fi other 50% is the suspenseful element. And the suspenseful element was horrible to me. The whodunit aspect, the reasonings behind the person, I don't wanna spoil this book in case you do want to read it, but the reasoning behind this person's motives for doing all the crappy crap that they did. Like, no. I also just felt like the couple in here was very lackluster compared to all the other couples that I've read about that Emma Scott has written. And so this just wasn't for me. And that's that. If you love this book, by all means, shout about it from the rooftops. I'd love to know why you love it. Please let me know in the comments. It just was not for me. 
and I was just really disappointed because I love Emma Scott's books so much and this one just missed the mark. There is trigger warning in here if you want to read this book. There's trigger warning in here for guns, drugging, and hospitals, by the way. Next, I have Wrong Bad Right Guy by Katie Robert. This is another case where Katie Robert was on my uh, favorite author list and I wanted to go back and read her backlist. I believe this is her first published romance. And I think that is my mistake here. I'm going back to read my favorite author's first books and they're just not holding up as much as their recent releases, which makes sense. Like these authors are growing in their writing. This book specifically was written in 2012. It's what over, it's about 10 years later. And Katie Robert is now one of the most popular romance authors in today's age, um, especially when it comes to indie romances. But I can definitely see the growth. From reading this book. This is where the heroine of this story is really into this guy. She works at an art gallery and this guy owns the art gallery and puts all the paintings up and everything like he creates everything there and he owns like a studio apartment I believe up above the gallery so the heroine has keys to the building, his apartment and everything and she's been crushing on him for so long and she decides one night she's going to seduce him. So she goes up to the apartment, proceeds to get in his bed and do stuff to him while he is asleep, which is a big no, 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 no for me. Um, I will immediately hate a book that has that in there. Especially if you're not already an established couple where you do not have consent beforehand. Like, yeah, girl, you're my girlfriend or you're my wife or you're my partner, or whatever the case may be. And I'm freely up to you doing whatever you want when I'm asleep go ahead. Um, you have my blessing, essentially, you my consent. And so, especially when it's someone you've never been with before and you don't know how they feel about you, you don't know their past trauma when it comes to, or past feelings when it comes to being intimate with somebody, like, how could you just do that to someone when they're asleep? Like, that's a giant no from me. Anyway, that's just the first red flag of this book. There are many others, I don't wanna to get too deep into it, but um, the heroine is doing stuff to this guy when he is asleep. He wakes up, they get it on, but then when the lights turn on, she realizes it is not the guy that she's been crushing on. It is that guy's brother. And things basically spiral from there. This was not it for me. I did not enjoy this book. I do like how Katie Robert has been growing in her writing because this was not, this was not the best, unfortunately. And I feel so bad, like, hating on these books but like sometimes it's good to like rant all your feelings <laughs> you know i need a rant day this is that day the next one in here is a novella this is princess in disguise by karen hawkins this is book number 1.5 in her duchess diary series this one was really just disappointing to me because i love all of the books in this series so much there's three books in this series all of them are about sisters going to house parties and the duchess uh, of the house party they go to ends up like being a matchmaker and matching them up to somebody at the house party. It's so cute, very metal, some family members. I love that. And each book is just fantastic. This is a novella that takes place after book one. And it was not great, unfortunately. This was also an Anastasia retelling, I just wanna say that. But yeah, this girl who's a long lost princess is traveling through England, trying to find a husband. And there she finds this basically drunk as a skunk scotsman and at an inn and they get it on and whatever so i listed like on my review for this like listed quite a few things that bothered me that made me really dislike this book number one there were many fat phobic comments so many fat phobic comments i hated that two people doing things to a person with their sleep yet again like come on people the next one is the use of the g word many times so yeah, I love this series so much, but skip this book, please. Oh, next one is so sad, but Daisy's Decision by Ruby Dixon is on here. I was very disappointed by this book in ways I was, and in also ways I was not, because I just didn't like Daisy, but I kind of expected to like Daisy after reading this. That's I think that was disappointing to me was I still don't like Daisy after reading this book. So this is book number 16 in Ruby Dixon's Ice Home series. I'm not gonna spoil or really talk about this book, like the summary, because it, it'll spoil, but it's about one of the human women named Daisy trying to find her mate. Um, and she's very spoiled, very selfish, very self-centered. Um, and I despised her, just like 
many people despise her and Tia in this series, you know? And I don't feel like this book redeemed her. I did not. I didn't, I did not like her when reading this. So um, this was disappointing to me because I was expecting to love her after reading this book and I unfortunately did not. Next one is just a little disappointing. Okay, the next is The Fake King's Dream by Jamie Schlosser. Uh, this is book two in her Between Dawn and Dusk series. The first one being The Fake King's Curse. And I love that one. I gave that five stars. I read the novella that takes place before that. I believe I gave that one five stars. And this one was just unfortunately like a 3.5 for me. It's on my five star prediction video for 2022. You'll know more of my thoughts at the end of the year when that vlog comes out. But this one just let me down a little bit because I didn't love it as much as the other ones. So like nothing inherently wrong about this. It just was disappointing for me personally because I didn't love it as much as the other two. And it was a little bit too insta-lobby for me. There were things that just weren't explained as well as the previous two books I've read. And that's all I'm gonna say about this one because my five star prediction video will break down this book more when that comes out. Another one that wasn't like, nothing was necessarily wrong about it. It just did not live up to my expectations was The Midnight Bride by Katie Wilde. This is the second book to The Midwinter Mail Order Bride, which is one of my favorite fantasy romance books ever. And so I was really sad that I did not love this book. I just loved that first book so much. This one was just very lacking to me. The hero and the heroine are on a journey and a race to find this lost, lost, ooh, lost artifact. And um, that's all I'm gonna leave you with with the summary because I don't wanna spoil anything. Um, but the world building was not as good as the other book in the series. And I felt very lost. And like I liked the characters and how like devoted the hero was to the heroine. Uh, however, just like, it just wasn't as good as book one. So I was a little disappointed. And the last book that I wanna mention is The Cyborg Merman by Amanda Milo. And oh, I feel so bad putting an Amanda Milo book on this list because I love her. She's one of my favorite alien romance authors. She is so good in her writing. And so I'm very, I don't know, shocked that she wrote this book. This is one where our heroine is a widow. Her husband owned this farm and a close confidant and business partner of her now deceased husband was this cyborg merman creature and in this land apparently the way that you can get a land from a woman is by sexually assaulting her and so he does just that but apparently he has mind control powers and he can go into someone's mind and make them feel whatever emotion so he tries to make her happy and pleased during the scene, even though she is screaming and bucking and wanting to get away. And so then she starts developing feelings for him based off of the, the thoughts he puts in her brain. It's like her falling for her rapist when there's no redeeming qualities about him besides him being ignorant and not knowing that what he did was wrong. He still does not think that what he did was wrong at the end of the book. And this is a 60 page novella. So disappointing because I love Amanda Milo so much, but this was not it. She did put a foreword in the book that was like, this book is dark. It's not for everybody. I get that. Anyway, that is going to be it for today's video. Sorry for being a negative Nancy, but again, I just needed a rant day. And today was that day. Um, sorry if you liked any of these books. I would love to know what you love about these books if you love it. I'm, I'm honestly curious and I really would love to know. Let's have civil conversations in the comment section. I love to hear your thoughts on these books. And I also wanna mention this is no hate or ill will on authors, by the way. Like I don't hate any of these authors or these people. Um, I just don't like these specific books and they let me down. And that's that. Please leave a comment if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, if you actually want to read them, let me know. Um, if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the any sad emoji in the comment section down below. Um, but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.